everyone, so today I am going to be showing you these 48 real brush pens by Arteza. Those of you that have been following me will know that I am currently, I guess, collaborating with them in some way. They've asked me to share product on my channel. I get to choose the product and I get to give an honest review as well. So these are the 48 real brush pens. Lots of you have been asking me when I'm going to do the video on these. So hopefully you like my, like I said, honest review. Um, yeah, on how they work really. So I have used brush pens in the past. I have the SIA Japanese brush pens. Um, as soon as I kind of unboxed these, straight away I thought they're very, very similar to that brush pen. So these are a bristle tip, not a solid tip. So this is the box, like I said, this is the 48 pack and you get all of your colors listed on the back there. So let's open this one up. Okay, so I guess if you're limited on space, then this is a great way to keep them stored. In, and again, if you want to keep them in the or order that they've kind of packaged them, I guess. I, however, will take these out and I will mix them in with my other ones and I will have them in the kind of colours that I want and the, I guess, the blends that I like together and things like that. Everybody has their own kind of preferences to how they store these things. But first impressions, really nice variety of colours. Like I said, this is the 48 box and you do have this brush pen, water brush pen there as well. So here is one of the pens, if I just bring this one up a bit closer for you. So you've got a clear lid here, you've got your colour on the end and they are, you've got a round barrel. So if you've got the lid on then they won't roll off your desk. It's nice to be able to see obviously the colours. One thing I will say as well is that the colour on the ends, pretty much on most of them, I found quite true to the colour because sometimes you can buy pens and I guess for the price that these are, these are quite these are a good entry level brush pen. I was surprised at how well the colours did, I guess, match up to the colour once it's on the paper. So yeah, that's quite handy because already when I was using them, for example, this one here, the Wisteria, which I'll show you the card I made, it was so true to that colour, so I was able to just grab it straight away without even seeing the name or the number on the side here, I could just go by the end. So I quite liked that because I've picked up other pens before in the past, um, even pencils as well, coloured pencils, and I've gone to use them and the colour's just not been right. It's not that true to what's on there. So these ones are. Um, so yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by that. You've got the little clip here as well if you need to do so when you <laughs> hook it onto anything. Um, because they're obviously a brush pen, they need to be kept in an airtight lid, and these do. They've got these tiny little kind of, almost looks like a little wave kind of pattern going around the sides there, and that really does kind of form a nice suction on the end there. And then that will sit on the end there as well. Okay, so it all works nicely. Like I said, these are often compared to the Zig markers, I don't have the Zig markers, but I have the SAI, and it's very, very similar to that. So again, I did say that this is a bristle. Let me just show you, just grab this here. So you can see there, I can split it apart, and you can see all those bristles on the end there. So they are, they're pretty, yeah, in terms of the pigment, there's a lot, they're highly pigmented, should I say. So you get a lot of color in there. I don't know how far down into the barrel the color goes. I don't know how long these will last. So again, if anybody does already have these and you've been using them a lot, yeah, it'd be interesting to see because as far as I'm aware, these are not refillable. Okay, so I did go and do a swatch. Now, what I've done here is I've done a swatch dry and then a swatch by adding water. You can use these either or, so if you are doing brush lettering, you can just go into them dry, but if you do want to add water to the ends, or if you want to use these you know, completely with water, then I just thought it'd be nice to show you the two kind of variations, and it's really nice. So here you have, for example, this is the A116 Peach, so I've gone in dry there, and then here I've just done the dry at the top and then I've added the water to bleed it out and you can see there you get a nice blend and again here you've got the lemon yellow and then again by adding water and so on so you'll see the two there and I've just listed dry and water under each one this will then get laminated and this goes with all my other ones so I can just see first look when I see it all together here is I love this um I love this strip here particularly I think the teal colors I just, I love that kind of blend there. I think that's really, really nice, especially if you're doing any kind of water 
um, kind of cards or backgrounds and then I guess these two here are just really nice for your skies and then the purples I really like as well especially that's the wisteria there I just thought that was a really really nice color and again if I just bring in that one that I was saying about there's the end of the pen and there's obviously the color and you can see that that's a pretty good match so for that reason I really like it and again as if I give you another example this here is the rouge pink so where are we rouge pink pink and there you can see so when I'm looking at my swatch that color does you know match up to this so when I'm just looking at all of these ends which I have them stored like I can just go and grab that and it, it's been pretty true so I don't think I've picked up a wrong one yet and as another example you've got eggplant purple which is this one here if I bring that one up there you can see I think they're pretty good considering this is a plastic and this is paper I don't think they've done too bad so again I think that's another hit because I'm just looking at a lot of my pencils for example and I know some of them just do not come out the same so that's another good one and then on the other side here is the other colours slightly interesting kind of movements with some of the um the colours there but that's because I'm using the smooth side and this is the Arteza 300 GSM watercolour paper as well and all of these will be linked below and also over on my blog I think there's a really nice variety I think you've got a nice mix of greens and then going into these more I guess you know your browns and your autumnal colours there which are lovely the browns and then you've got a nice mix of greys and then finishing there with the black so really really pleased with that and again here I think well I guess if I was saying maybe we could have a bit more is maybe some yellows maybe another yellow could go in there but otherwise I think for the 48 box I think there's a really really good mix these are really nice as well I love that one there that's the wine red I thought that was really really nice so I'm going to give you um, a few examples here of cards I've made so this was the first card that I made and this one I just went right into real detail and using lots of colors and getting lots of blends so there's for me looking in at it and the perfectionist in me um, I guess there are some flaws in how I maybe wanted it to work but I think that's because I went in and I'd never used these ones before now I'm a bit more familiar with them. If I was to redo this exact image, I'd do it differently. And I think I'd be obviously happier with the results. I guess if some of you are looking at this now, you probably think it looks completely fine. Um, but we're all our, our own worst critics, aren't we? So, but really like it. I love the different colors, like I say, that come out. Like if I was to find that one now, I know that that would be this one here, which is, well, the very center here, the darker tones, which is the orange, where am I here so it's this one here and again just another example you can see how well that matches up so it's really nice that I can if I really wanted to copy this exactly the same I know I can I know I'm going to get those same colors so again I really like that and I think that's a you know um, just a nice feature so then I decided to do this more simplified version and this is just using three colors so I've got the bumblebee yellow for the centers I've got the wisteria for the flower and then I've got the turtle green for the leaves. The turtle green is this one here, which I loved, and the bumblebee yellow is this one here. So just by using the three pens, you can create this look, and this is very, very easy, and this is the style that I'm gonna share in a moment when I do the demo. And then, like I said, this one here is just a lot more detailed. Now, even that background I created as well using these pens. So you can get a lot out of them. Yeah, I again, it's, I haven't got a bad thing to say about them. Obviously, there are more advanced brush pens out there, but I haven't tried those. So my personal opinion on these is good. It does what I would like it to do. I need to play around more because I do like to do more detailed, I guess, colouring. Um, so I will spend more time with that. But if you want to get some quick colouring done, this is the effect you can get. And I think it's really good. And that's what I'm going to share now. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail with these pens. Okay, so I'm just moving in a little bit closer now and I'm just gonna pull in more colors. This is the Arteza um, watercolor pad. Like I said, this is a 300 GSM um, and it's really nice. I like this one and I like that you've got the smooth, obviously, side for stamping, which is always handy as well. So I just wanna show you the different um, kind of results that you can get with this. So I am gonna just quickly stamp those same flowers. I'm just using Versafine, purely because this works well when you're using any kind of water-based pens. Okay, so I'm happy with those. Now what I'm gonna do is, a couple of things that I have 
found with this particular brush pen is that I think they work better for colouring and blending for my needs when I add the water first and then go in with the pen. Now the reason I say that is, for example, if I use this eggplant purple, so if I do, if I just do that there, okay, then if I come in with the, so this is the water pen that you get, um, I've used this a lot, I do like it. So that's been sitting there, just make sure I take off the last colour that was on here. Now if I go to move this, you get this line, it's already stained, it's quite a strong line that's there. Now you can work that, so if I go back into it again, now it's wet, I can make that disappear because already it's reacting with the water and it's moving and blending out. So I can now remove that harder line and I can get that blend coming through. So yeah, I would say, and now you can see there, it's pretty much disappeared. So again, if I just show you that with another, if I show you it with a darker color, because they're the ones that are gonna stain more, you may not notice it so much maybe on a red, I'm sorry, on a, a yellow and things like that, but if I use this red, so again, pop that in there and then come in with this one again just make sure I get off that last colour and then if I bring that one out even that one's not too bad that has kind of blended out quite nicely actually so maybe not so much but I did find it with some of them that I had to work that so I guess maybe I've got I've gone into that a bit quicker but if you were to maybe add all the dry colour then go away, leave it to the next day or something. I think you'd find it quite hard to move and lift away. So if you are gonna do it by going in dry first, or even if you're doing, like I said, letter writing, which I don't tend to do, but if I, again, it's, I'm, I can't even do it with these. I'm not even gonna attempt it because it's not something I do. But I know then a lot of people will come in and kind of blend out the ends. You know, you can kind of see, it will go there, but I prefer adding the water first, and I will show you that now. So let me just again remove this colour here. So if I decide now, so I'm going to do this flower. So what I'm going to do is add water all around the very centre part there, like so. And then I'm going to come in with this colour and just go over it. And already it's starting to bleed out. So it's doing the work for you. So you can see there. And now I can just add a bit more water and just pull that colour out. Again, come around here. And because it's already got the water there, it's not drying, so it's, it's allowing me to move it with ease, like so. And then again, I can go in and add more darker pigment and because they've got a real nice point to them they're not the pointiest and I do find that some of the bristles do come out and you have to kind of pull them this one's okay um, you can obviously get into those more detailed parts of your stamped images if that's what you're doing again everybody uses these for different ways so somebody that doesn't do stamping and is just maybe you know an illustrator you know artist and does landscapes or you know, they might, the things I'm saying now, they may not find an issue for what they use them for. So, yeah, it's it's finding the right one for you, I guess. Um, but I do like them. I think they, once you get used to them, like I said, I went in with that first card and kind of just, you know, went in and didn't really know how they worked too well. Whereas now I've got more of an idea. So you can see there now I've got quite a nice blend in that centre. So now let's bring in, um, I'm going to do all different colours in this flower just so I can show off as many as possible. So I'm going to come in with, I want to use a dark pink. Let's use this one actually. Yeah, the rouge pink. So now I'm going to do this next layer. Now you can go in dry. I'm going to do it dry just to show you the, the difference. So now I'm going to just do the same. Go all around the insides here. But by the time I get around to where I started, that colour is quite, you know, stuck in the paper now. It would be harder to lift, whereas with maybe some of the watercolour pencils I've got, 
I can, once I add the water to the dry pencil, I can still lift it almost completely off the paper. Um, so I've got a lot of movement with it. But now if I start to bleed this out, I don't know how well it's picking up on camera, but it's leaving that solid line. And this is what I was trying to kind of show more there. If you leave it for too long, you get that line. So you should be picking that up, but it is easy to obviously rectify. Now it is also good though to have that because you get that very, very deep pigment in those kind of, you know, darker areas on a stamped image that you want. So I do want this to be quite dark. So I have been doing it this way still, although I think they work better by adding the water first. I guess I'll probably end up chopping between the two ways to be honest. So I don't think that's blended so much. You can see there's quite a line all the way around there. But now because I've just added water with that, and if I go back over again, already I can see now it's starting to bleed out and that line is disappearing. So again, it's not a negative, it's just using it in a way that's gonna work for you. Some people may find that that's actually what they want it to do. So now when I go back in with that water, it's disappeared. So I guess that's telling me that they are I guess, well, yeah, you can't really make a mistake with them. You can lift them once you add water to them. I found that I went back into that card a few days later. Um, I couldn't, the color had really set in, so I couldn't really lift it too much. I have had other things before that I can go in, even like a couple of weeks after, and I can still lift the color off, but that was with pencils, not um, brush pens. So again, I'm just gonna add a bit more water there and just come back in with this because it's not blended too much there. It's got too much of a harsh line. So I guess with these, I have to work them a bit more. And this is what I mean by working them. Go in, go out, you know, so on and so forth. Whereas I guess, because I use watercolor pencils a lot more, that's my comfort zone as, as such. Um, but I think it's down to practice, but I don't find I have to do this so much. So that is using now the Rouge Pink and that was the, the Wisteria, wasn't it? Yes, this one here. But it does work. Now, if you want to go in even darker, because I'm just looking through my camera there and it almost looks like there's hardly any colour on this at all. But you can go right in down here and bring in more of that colour. But you can also come in the red, which is right in front of me here. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go right over this very inner part of the flower with the red, because that should blend really nicely with the rouge. And because there's water already down there, I can bring this in now and I can pull that out. A little bit of a line there, but I can go back into that again. So I hope this is picking up well and you get what I'm trying to kind of show you in this. See again, maybe that water was a bit drier because it has left. See again there, it's got quite a line. Yeah, you can see that it's not picking up. It's not bled out as much as I would like it to. So. Again, I've just squeezed out more water, so I've saturated that a lot more. So now if I kind of start pulling it out with the pen, like so, start bringing it out to the very edges there, just so you can see more color in the video, like so. Yeah, that's picking up much more. And then I can come in here now. You may prefer as well, if you've not used these before, is don't use one of these water pens, is use a paintbrush and just some water in a pot that way you've got more control because I know now, I've used these particular ones quite a lot, that I know the amount of pressure I need to apply, you know, to obviously have more water or less. If you've not used them before and you've got more water on your paper and it may be just not going the way you want it, whereas obviously if you've got the paintbrush, it's um, much, much easier. So I haven't done this leaf here and I've just kind of gone into that, so I'm just going to around with this. This is a very bizarre flower by the way but it was just a nice way to show you guys how these actually work. Now another thing you can do as well is if you just want to do obviously a singular colour, so let's use the same one that I used on the leaves before, all I've done is just put a very small amount of the green in the very bottom of the leaf and then just pull it out. Just pull from the bottom all the way up to the edge. So instantly there with just that one colour, you've literally got that effect there. 
just in that leaf. And again, if you want to dry it in between each, you know, application, if you dried it now, you could then finish your picture or, you know, whatever it is with just the real dry, very, very deep, highly pigmented colour at the very, very, you know, inner part there, because that's where the most, I guess, shadow would form. But that's still wet, so it's still slightly bleeding out there, so I can just flick that out just to continue that blend, like so. Okay, but again, if I wanted to go back into that one now that's probably dried more, where I've got the wisteria, if I came in with the eggplant, and just put some tiny little kind of parts there just around it, just to really make that centre part that I haven't coloured yet really pop. I've just added some deeper, a deeper purple shade really now around that. So yeah, there's there's many ways to, there's, there, you know, there's no right or wrong with these. You can use them dry, use them wet, use them, apply again after, you know, it's entirely up to you. You can also, if I was to blend two completely different colours, let's use, by the way, the only reason I'm using these colours here is just because I pulled them out. There's not... They don't work any less, you know, or better than any other ones, so that didn't even make any sense, but anyway. So this is bubble, Bumblebee Yellow, and this is Rouge Pink. So if I had the, um, actually no, let's use, let's use the orange. So if I just bring this down here, so, pop that one in there. So again, it's a lovely pen for colouring in. So if you just want a really nice, there just for colouring then that's these are they are nice and then I'm going to bring in the let's stick with that one because I do like the rouge pink I'm going to do it up here just so I'm not going to come down into these colours and if I put this one here like so so I've got a lot of pigment there now again they have set on the paper so they will stain and then just Again, rinse my brush. So now if I come in here, start to move all of this around, start pulling it down, and then I'm going to bring this one here, loosen that all up, get my brush nice and wet, and start meeting it with this one, and then continue it down. You can see now, you can see where that line is that I was saying about, just here, mm, just picking it up slightly, but all I can do now, because it's wet, is just brush over that a little bit more, and it will slowly, totally remove that, like so. One thing I wouldn't suggest with these is dipping them into water, purely because you lose a lot of pigment in the water when that nib hits the, um, hits the water. So, what you can do though is don't be afraid to, let's try it with a, I want to try something that is dark going in, something, sorry, something, so, I want to try something that is light um, and bringing it into a darker colour. So what I'm going to do is I've got here the bumblebee yellow and that turtle green and I'm just going to hold this nib and I'm just going to pick up some of this turtle green just on the end of my nib here, okay, and what you can do and you'll see there it just blends like so. And then if you want to, you can just obviously add that in at the top and then add this in and blend it that way. And eventually that color will completely disappear and you can see now I've got that real nice yellow again. So it's not damaged my nib. You can see there it's completely gone. So that's another way as well if you want to, you know, blend a really dark colour into a lighter colour. It does work. So, yeah, that is everything. I am going to stamp another simple kind of flower. I may probably do the same one again, actually, and use some different colours. I think I'm going to use um, maybe some oranges and yellows to do the flower this time. And I'm going to just pop that on high speed just so you can see kind of all the little bits that I've just showed you and how I put it into practice because I think that's a bit of a random flower. But just again to show you the different effects you get is this one here. And you can really see that was that what I just showed you with this leaf here. And that's exactly the same there. And then that's just using that one wisteria 
and then that bumblebee yellow in the center there but I do really like that but equally I do love elements to this I love the blend I've got there with the leaves really like that and also here with these little buds um, some of them are better than others I prefer these ones here love this kind of effect that I've got here so it takes you know it's a lot of practice plus also this was using the kind of no line paint oh, or yeah I guess painting technique or no line stamping technique so I need to work on that a little bit more with these but I still really like it and it's still going to get used but I am going to now just stamp this image again but this time I'm going to use yellows and oranges and hopefully you'll be able to pick up a really nice blend between Okay, so there's those flowers that you've just watched me colour in and I really like this mix. So I've used here the, let's have a little look. So this was the orange and the, no sorry, this was the cadmium orange and this is the orange. I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway, those two. And again, just to show you how well they match, you can see both those, the deeper colour in the centre there and then the lighter towards the outer part of the flower and then for the leaves I used two different greens so I've used the seaweed green which is the darker and then the parakeet green and you saw me there working those and then in the center I just used the dry bubblegum or I keep saying bubblegum bumblebee yellow so I used five colors there to create that and I think it looks really really nice hopefully the video you know you were able to kind of watch me I did go in and come out of it, I let it dry, go back in again. I could probably still lift a little bit here. I love the blend there, I've got a perfect blend. Really like that. There's a few little blocks there which I may go back in and work. That's blended fine. So, you know, these are something that you have to play around with and get used to, but they are very easy. So this is a basic kind of way to use them. And then like I said, once you get more confident, start adding in more, start kind of, you know, I guess organizing your colors together into the blends that you like and then obviously that's easier for you to revert to but I'm going to now put this all together in a card just so you can see how it looks when it's all finished okay so there's the finished card I really like how this one's turned out I've just used the hugs which was just a die set that I've got and I finished it with some of the glossy accents over the top as well but I really like how they've come back I did go back in and work the larger bloom there so you can see now there's pretty much a really nice even blend of colour there and yeah really like how they turned out so that's the other one so they're the simple ones but I think you get really great results so if you are new to you know this kind of thing new to blending new to colouring in general then you know I think just stick with two three colours and you can easily create these you know effects and then that there is obviously slightly different I think the reason it looks so different as well is because this is obviously stamped in turn you know you're trying to do that um, no no line coloring so the stamped image is very very faint whereas these are stamped in black so you can really see it so yeah they're my three um, samples I guess the stamp set and die set that I used is this one here which is bloom you get the dies and the stamps. It's really nice and it's currently in the shops. It's the Simply Cards and Paper Craft magazine. So again, I will share the links to that one as well because yeah, the fact that it comes with the die and the stamps and you can see it's a really nice size. These are on five by seven cards. So they're really good ones there. A couple of the other ones I fussy cut, but otherwise they did die cut. Okay guys, so that's the review done. Overall, I really like them for me. It's how I can use this product in my card making and I'm really pleased with how the card 
cards have turned out and I hope you agree I think they look lovely so for that reason yeah I would recommend them I think they're really really nice I know some of you already have them so because you've been you know you pop that in the comments over on other Arteza reviews that I've done so um, for that reason yeah thumbs up Arteza I like them but I also want to say I am loving the coloured pencils so I use these already I've shared the demo where I made this card but I have been using them off camera and I'm just really really enjoying these so if you are again new to using Arteza products if you're new to colouring and you're trying to find that right thing to work for you I'm really loving these just the simple coloured pencils you don't need anything else apart from the pencil they blend nicely and this white quartz which is the the white quartz pencil this one here the just the way it takes to you know this for example here craft card is brilliant it can add highlight so well to your stamped images so yeah for that reason I love it and I also like the waxed finish that this also gives so I will share all those links below as well I will also link up the demo to these ones just so you can see me actually creating this card because I think you'll really like it but flowers are always a nice one to use in a demo because I really think you can show off like the blending really well and um, yeah I hope that you agree but um, yeah loving these cards so that's everything guys the links will all be shared below if you do go across to Arteza and you do decide to purchase anything I will share the coupon code below Below, and if you use that then you will receive 10% off as well so yeah that's it guys hope you like it give me a thumbs up if you did and yeah I'll be back again soon with another tutorial thanks for watching bye